Hey guys, welcome. Now, I was called to be here as there's a message. And I personally right now am going through it. It's been rough as old earth is dying. And the connection to old earth is dying. There's a sadness. We're being faced with our sadness. We're being faced with our three of swords. We're in the time of the three of swords, the five of cups, connection to the four of cups. But it's because we have to create with the two six of cups, ten of cups connection. It's time for our purpose and our purpose is connected to our quality and our quality is, our quality is connected to our purification and how we just treat ourselves. How do we treat ourselves? Do we do we treat ourselves equally? Do we treat do we treat life equally? Are we reflecting that back to the universe? Do we understand that life matters, all of life? It's this purification to innocence, purification to before things became toxic, before things became tainted. And it's healing from the shame that's been put there. We're not shameful about this. Shame and guilt and fear, it's what we came here to move away from. It's time for us to expand. It's time for us to create anew. This message is connected to the Piscean moon. And in being a Piscean, I, I mean, I, f I feel so connected. I feel so connected to what is happening. I feel so connected to everything that's happening. I understand that I came here uh, as I'm getting more and more information about myself uh, gifted back to me from the work that I've been doing. It's like understanding that I came here to teach this part of the transformation. Now, does that mean that I'm better than anybody else? No, I'm not. There's a humble charge in what we came here to do. This is just what I came here to do. This is my mission. This is acceptance of that. And you know what? If you really talk to many people on their missions, the mission is like a double-edged sword. It's like, you know, nobody in, you know, where we've come from, from old earth, wishes what we go through to awaken upon ourselves. We, in order to, like, the divine is teaching us through experience and some very, very, very painful experiences in order to understand what we came here to do. And it's like this deep pain is going to allow this such a deep transformation. And that's why we were built to experience this. And, you know, feeling like I, I just feel so torn apart. My I, I feel so torn. I've never felt so torn. And my moon being in Aquarius knows we're this is where we're just going. I, like this, just accept it. But it's like it, it's pain. It's just, it's, it's pain of where we have been wounded, where we have not been supported, where we have been betrayed, where we have been denied, where we have been completely broken. You know, where we've walked through the fires of hell and had to raise our vibration back towards the heavens, through the earth, through the middle road of finding the balance. There's confirmations from those sirens right there. And you know, just within my own personal life here, my own mission work, having so much of like, you know, reflected back, like to how bad do we want to go home? How bad are we willing to work in order to be real with the action with ourselves, the action it's going to take in order to heal, transform and raise our vibrations in order to really honor this path that's in front of our face in order to go home? how like how much more will we endure within our karmic loops before we spiral out and it's about listening to that intuition it's about listening to that gut it's about honoring that gut it's like how many times have we just heard the gut talking to us our intuition talking to us but we just kept following following anyways we just kept following anyways even though we knew where we were going and it didn't turn out pretty but it's like honoring that it's like you know, it's like switch to consciousness. It's like the gear switches in. Click. Okay, I'm conscious. No, I'm not going to keep going. I must be conscious. I must be conscious. This challenge has been set forth to me to expand. 
I must be consciously aware and go here. And I must understand that my old patterning, I'm going to be wanting to naturally, you know, go here because this is where I feel safe. But we're breaking, we're breaking free from, from what's safe. We're facing our fears. And we're going towards the unknown in order to expand because we're being called there. We just know it's time to listen to our intuition. It's time to go with our gut. This is allowing the feminine energy to rise. The cups is really doing a grand purification in order to get us home. And I've been, sh uh, a message has been shared. Guys, please bear with me. This is an intense time. We're an intense time of purification in order to get, get home. Now we're, we're going to purify, purify, purify. Let's receive the message. Pisces is helping us to expand on the path of the moon. And as a twin flame, this is where you met your counterpart on the path of the moon. We're, we've connected to the energy of lunacy, madness, right? Because this is connected to the all as well. This is making sense of things we're going to go from lunacy our madness the madness that's being created on the path of the moon because we need to understand something we need to make connections here have double helix dna activations and transform with the energy of us this is connected to our chakras the energy of the ancient scarab beetle and we know what the scarab beetle has to tell us. It's time to move our dung, our shit, our toxicity out of the way, guys. The time's come. It's now. This is going home to new earth. These two figures here are connected to our Egyptian ancients and a strong connection as well to our Egyptian ancestors. They hold the key to everlasting life. The Ankh. And we are going to follow the light on the path of the moon, make the connections that we need to make between the masculine and feminine, the child from the heavens to the earth through us. But this is happening within. Now, these two jackals are here because if we fall off the path of the moon, they're waiting to see if, if they can have a snack. We're the snack. These are the lower vibrational entities that are waiting to feed off of us when we fall off the path and this happens we're not going to fall off the path though we're going to stay on target we're going to stay on mission work we're going to keep following that light in order to expand because it's time to go home guys it's time to go home and we need to decide do we need do we want to go home or not the choice is up to us this card has a message for us let's receive it the scarab provokes the lunar gaze. The presence of the moon is a call to explore the deeper aspects of your subconscious mind and a need for illumination on your shadow self in every sense of the word. There may be experiences in your past which you may wish to ignore, refuse to observe, or even deny, but steps must be taken to resolve these traumas. If you stray from the path, your own darkness will consume you and you will be lost in the anarchy of your mind and emotions. And we want to heal from the anarchy of our mind and emotions. Now, we're in the anarchy within our mind and emotions for a reason because things are twisted. We are in deprivation. The matrix has manipulated the energies. We're being deprived. We're in deprivation. Remember, we're going... No, come back down here. Remember, we're going home, okay? This is our connection to our prosperity, our divine inheritance. The trees of our truth. The Kabbalah. We all have a divine blueprint, okay? There's all a divine path to expansion. And we all each have our own divine expansion path, okay? Our divine blueprint. And this is how many times we created within the cup, Okay. We didn't just create one thing. We're creating within the cup things that are going to lift our vibration. Experiences that are going to help us expand home into new earth. And there are the fish representing yin and yang. And the dark has now found balance with the light. 
and the light has now found balance with the dark. This beetle is also helping to call us to see where the energies have been manipulated. That's part of what's being illuminated here for us. We're seeing now where the energies have been manipulated. That's why we got the message of manipulation from La Luna herself. The moon is helping us to heal from the devil energies, from our addictions. Because our madness, our lunacy, our mind being in anarchy with our emotions, we need to put that energy to good use. So it's all about desire. And these desires are connected to our flame. Us. The God spark creation now the devil here look he's got all this gold and it's just falling into the abyss and the feminine here look her truth her truth she's being held by her truth the masculine being held by the, the libido the sacral chakra and the feminine the throat chakra but they can escape this place Let's receive the message of the devil card. The devil, the flower of duality appears beneath him. Countless souls plummet through the torments of their desires. The devil speaks to our temptations and the raw potential of creating any experience we want without reservation or judgment. Upon the appearance of the devil, you are invited to observe the personally enticing temptations in your life. However, instead of seeing these temptations as a bad thing, ask yourself the question, which temptations will support my growth and which will stunt my growth? What do you genuinely desire, both in spirit and in ego? You must be mindfully that all things in life are tempting in some capacity, and the devil simply brings awareness to what is spiritual, physical, the pursuits you are following at this time. So the devil's showing us what spiritual and physical pursuit, pursuits we are following at this time. Because remember, everything is part of the all. And even though we've, we're separated, we're coming back to one. And that's the beautiful part. We can separate things, but we can always unite and come back to the all. So what is, what is unhealthy for us? What is addictive for us? And the, this is where things have once again become out of balance. We, we're, we're coping. We're, because we're feeling separate, we're trying to get high. Get high with the energy of the light. But it's through artificial substances. It's through overstimulus. We need to remember that we're, as twin flames, creating in the energy of the opposites. This is how we're going to create love from fear and connection from disconnection. So we need to know these devil energies. We're going to understand where we are separate so we can unite and why we are separate. What has been manipulated within our universes and remembering that our paths back to one are all unique and honoring that. So we're going to deal with our withdrawal. We see here that we've been creating, we've been creating within these cups. There's the seed of life, the fruit of life, and the flower of life within this imagery. We have a friend here. They've come to offer us a cup. And this cup is connected to the patterning of the tree of life. And this is our expansion pack. This is spirit. But we don't 
no one is sick up because we're too busy with what we've created here but th what we've created with we've we've understood this now now it's it's time to create a new it's time to connect to us our connection from with us to spirit to break the disconnection so yes we've created within these cups to understand patterning to understand experience and lessons in order to expand but we still need to connect to the right cup we don't we're not having anything to do with that because we're so focused on this but this water's gone stagnant and this is the thing water needs to flow or it is stagnant we need to connect to the cup of life and we need to remember that that's what pisces is helping us to do is to go from sadness to happiness this is connected to stagnation and withdrawal we need to create flow we're not in flow here in order to do so we must heal from our loss and heal from our sorrows and this is where we have a transformation this is connected to the energy of scorpio and now what we've been creating with is just gone it's time for an expansion and this is connected to the anarchy of our emotions and the anarchy of our thoughts. We need to heal that with some peace. Loss is experienced, but loss of what? Loss of the idealistic fantasy we held inside and loss of the anticipation and expectations for a specific out outcome. The truth is out. Here, there are feelings such as letting go of hopes, experiencing setbacks, disappointments, breaking up and regret you have taken something for granted and so it has left you with the feeling of emptiness solace can be found in the awareness that this is not the end but a state of passing through this too shall pass and it will come up with the rebirth of knowing that in order to receive love we must give it in order to transcend it we must feel it and this is being in the energy of what we're receiving. We're manifesting. So it's like if we're just in sorrow and loss and sadness, we're going to manifest back more sorrow, loss and sadness so that we can continue to have the experience in order to create a new. But if we see the negative, the loss, and we add the positive charge, our gratitude, well, there we're just already expanding out of the situation. It was a lesson. Okay, we lost something. We took something for granted, but we learned something. And when we go forth in the future, we're taking those lessons with us. We didn't really lose. We gained knowledge. We gained experience. Now we're going to move forth because it's time for us to deal with our illusions. And this is connected to greed. We must heal from greed. This is how we got to where we're at. But we're feeling greedy because we're feeling separate. We're not feeling like self because the energies have been manipulated. So it's time to heal. Before we receive this message of illusion, I just must say, this is why the biggest reason why we must face this is because if we don't face this, as as we go forth within our life, we are projecting our wounds without. And we know this is connected to the Three of Swords. I'm surprised I don't have the Three of Swords here. The Three of Swords is connected to everything. So we, we heal from our wounding, our trauma, And that's what's being offered by the by the moon. And if we heal from our trauma, we're not projecting our wounds going forth in our future. So let's put it like this. Okay, so we're, we were in a relationship with somebody and it went toxic. Now we're moving on. We're moving forth into, a, we're creating a new. That relationship is over. Now we've started a relationship with somebody new. Everything goes great at first because you're having a new experience and it's positive. But the second something goes negative, here is our, our subconscious rushing in from the past, what we know to protect us. So we may be acting from our past experiences and projecting our wounds into that new relationship with that new person. 
Now, they may not be doing any of the things that we're feeling they are. We're, we've twisted things. We're in confusion. We don't want to... We don't want to project our past wounds into our relationships. We don't want to move forth with them in our futures. The whole goal is to heal from them, to see the truth, so that we can trust our instincts. We're trusting our instincts. This is healing with the feminine energy in order to restore equality. This is what I'm talking about here. Our sorrows are connected to our sadness. The Five of Cups... Our loss is connected to the Nine of Cups, which fulfillment, our happiness. Because we're going to restore flow and we, we need to remember, we came here to heal from codependency and this is part of putting our happiness in someone else. And what happens when we lose them? We've put our happiness in someone else, now we lose them, we experience sorrow, we experience loss. This is restoring happiness through self. And then if we experience a loss, we still understand how to create happiness through self. That is our connection to our divine inheritance, our abundance, Jupiter, with Pisces. So what are we going to do? We're going we're gonna to heal from our wounds, our traumas. And this is what the moon was offering us. To he a chance to, to heal from our trauma. Steps must be taken to resolve these traumas. We just received that message on the path of the moon. We, we must remember this is connected to the moon. We must remember that trauma is wounding. And our subconscious, our ego, kicks on in and wants to protect us from that wounding so it doesn't happen again. But if we heal from our trauma, we can trust our instincts. We have to actively do so, and there's many techniques. And this is why I started School for the Fool. I started working with trauma victims. I started working, through, of course, with myself first, and then started meeting people along the path. And if we heal from trauma, we can literally create a new. We don't have to be stuck in who we were, in that pain, in those templates, in victim templates. We came here to heal from victim templates. So it's time for us to move forward and create a new. Healed, transformed with a raised vibration into new earth because we're going home. We're going to find the way. Let's receive this message of illusion now. First, we're going to see through our illusions in order to get to this space. We're floating through a heavy water realm, observing a multitude of possibilities suspended around us. The Seven of Cups appear to us like a dream-like light, like a dream-like state, showing all that can be experienced from riches and contentment to phantoms, serpents, and dragons. Yet, which cup will deliver the desired outcome? Only one will lead us to where our soul truly wishes to go. And we want to go home. There is only one path of the heart. However, finding it may be difficult as the mind can easily play tricks on us. Getting us confused by the shimmer and seduction of the outside world. The devil energies. Only one path will take you where you want to go. And to know this path, you need only feel, attend to the information within your heart. So there's our connection to going within and the hermit. Because what's happened now, we've had a failure from healing from the devil energies within our lives. And we have been here within the matrix we're always constantly creating without it's like you know we don't feel well so we're gonna create without it's like the same thing it's like i'm gonna go get my hair did my nails did i'm gonna go buy this you know these things to make myself feel better but then you know after that stimulus wears off we're still feeling left with our wounds our wounding because we didn't go inside we tried to heal on the outside what we needed to heal on the inside. So we need to go within within and repair within. And that's going to hurt. 
Of course, we're going to run from it because it hurts. It's more pain. It's hard. But we're not running from this. It's time. It's time to go home. We need to ask ourselves, are we going to stay stuck in these karmic loops going around and around in a circle with the same outcome? Or are we going to face what we need to face, do what we need to do, and transform and create a new and spiral out? We're going to spiral out of that Fibonacci sequence and spiral. But we need to make the connection of the masculine and feminine energies in order to evolve. And that is what the loon, the loon, the moon is helping us to do here. To restore this resurrection in order to expand. Because this is our connection to Sagittarius. And remember that Sagittarius is helping us to go home as well. It's going to help us hit our mark and hit our aim. And Sagittarius is the energy that's connected to Jupiter. So it's time for us to have a reunication, a reunication of the energies. We're going to restore what's been twisted. We're going to restore connection because we felt abandoned. We've had abandonment issues somewhere around here. We haven't felt nurtured. We haven't felt loved. We haven't felt connected. We haven't felt heard, supported, all these things. So it's time to re reunite. And look, we must deal with our sorrows. So confirmation right there. We must deal with this. There's the two cups, but we're connecting to spirit. And this is connected to Saturn. Ooh, let me get back down here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is connected to Saturn. And the two cups and spirit. Facing the loss, leaving it behind in order to create a new. We have to leave this behind. And create a new. We can't stay here anymore in this loop. This is keeping us separate. This is keeping us at, at a loss. This is keeping us in the devil energies. And what's this going to cause eventually? Yeah, this is going to for sure lead to addiction. In order to continue feeling. So we're going to leave those five broken, worn out cups behind. And get on our journey through life. The last of the water drains through the cracks in the cups until they are barren. We, it, we take the three wispy cups along with us. They represent our hopes, our dreams, and moving forward. Though they lack substance and tangibility, what you have may, lo may no longer be working for you. And it's time to let go of which has been broken down and move on. It may be difficult at first because of an attachment you have established to previous manifestations in your life. But in the end, old energy must be allowed to dissolve for new life to come to both of you and that which are which you are letting go of. So we need to let new energy to which we're letting go of. This is restoring flow. This is restoring connection and it's going to connect us to our abundance and to our happiness. It's going to allow us to evolve. But we must deal with our gluttony. And this, this is connected to this and this. Three souls here have gathered together to embrace each other in conscious creation. Through this collaboration, they have materialized a multitude of delicious fruit, which together they share and enjoy. They have generated a creative space where only harmonious things can come into being. This is a card of friendship, creativity, community, and satisfaction. And this is the kind of energy we are creating with in New Earth. The fertile garden is lush with the fruits of abundance. In doing what you love and loving what you do, pleasure and accomplishment lead the way to a majestic growth and blossoming. Take some time to acknowledge the abundance, abundance that exists all around you. And always remember to do what you love and love what you do. If you are not in alignment with your heart's calling, then this card may indicate a shift to transform your occupation into one that is. We must, must remember... The time we are in right now, Pisces has come in and ripped that heart chakra wide open. So what? That poison can drain on out of those three of swords wounds and we can face our sorrows. We can face our loss and move on because it's time to go home. We're going to find the way now. 
But here, we're evolving now because we've made connection. We're rising through the energy of revolution and the masculine and feminine coming together in order to expand. We've done it here. We've done what we need to do in order to restore connection, wholeness. In the act of resur resurrection, we can now actively recreate our body of light after passage through death. We have come illuminated by connection to spirit and we see our old behaviors and thought patterns for what they are, what they were. Products of our ego, the power of our spirit initiates evolution by reassembling the ingredients of our past in a new way, thus creating a renewed and higher self. Which is mission work. Resurrection has come to advise us that now is the time to actively evolve into a new you. You have all this creative freedom inside of you, the awareness of limitless potential and the ability to become anything that you want. You have surrendered to your ego, moved through the passage of death and come out of the other side with a deeper connection to your higher self and the ability to become a new you. And yay, this is what we set out to do on the path of the moon. Heal from trauma. Heal from the energies that have been manipulated Find self, find what's us, find our light, restore connection. And now we have activated. Our DNA is literally transforming. Now we're going to achieve happiness and we need, <laughs> this is going to help us by always being able to heal from the devil energies because we understand how to restore flow through us. Look, we have what we need right here. We don't need this. We don't need to have anything to do with this. Look at what's happening here. Sitting within our aura, experiencing a sense of complete success and happiness. Here is perfection of the moment and the allowance of emotional flow to course through our entire body of consciousness enjoying the space of harmony trust love and optimism satisfaction for all of our dreams have come true and we are truly at peace within and without this is indicating that our dreams are coming true whatever you've dreamed of this is this is expressing glorious a glorious yes to having and living our dreams. Not only is the dream possible, but probable if you cultivate these light and happy feelings in each moment internally. As doing so will support the realization of this dream externally in the world. All you have to do is say yes to the moment. Yes to the feeling and yes to your love. Take some time for you. You deserve it. And there's the key. It's our love. It's saying yes to us. We didn't go, we didn't put our happiness in someone else. We put our happiness in self. And this is really like changing our perception of what relationships look like. Because for so long, we've been putting our happiness in this person. We've been ha putting our happiness in that person. We've been ha putting our happiness in this person. And when things go negative, we're all running amok. We're all here. We're all lost. If we put our happiness in self... We're never losing our connection to home. We're never losing our connection to spirit. We're never losing our connection to the divine and being able to shape shift our way into creating transformation that allows flow. This is being able to transmute whatever comes our way and continue to raise our vibration into happiness. We can create, we can create happiness from sadness here. And Pisces knows how to do this. This is the energy of artistry, creativity, fantasy in order to build and create a new to add those positive high vibe charge that may seem unrealistic to others, but it's not unrealistic. We're working with the energy of miracles here. We're working with the energies of the all of creation where what's possible, guys? What is possible? Anything's possible. It's time to expand. We need our spirituality though. And our spirituality is going to help us to restore connection from our withdrawal and our stagnation from the Four of Cups. 
Here's the connection now to the masculine and feminine energies expanding and healing with our chakras. This is healing from intolerance. This is part of the path. When we have entered new earth, we understand what it is like to be tolerant. We have this lesson learned. We understand it's about our spirituality, life, expanding with life, our divine blueprint. Look and look at that. We have the ankh now. We have the ankh. We're understanding what this all means. We've done enough work by this time in the expansion. The Hierophant, numbered by the Holy Star, is revealed to be a great spiritual leader, one who embodies the essence of divine wisdom and knowledge. Free from dogma, he is the basis of awareness of that which lies beyond the physical senses. His wisdom flows through him from all sources, teachings of histories, past lessons learned, life experiences, and wisdom he received through his devotion to spiritual practices. He is the harmony of the four elements, embodying the fifth element perfectly. He is both the learning and the teaching of the cosmic law. He is both the learning and the teaching of cosmic law and thus pours a new level of consciousness into the world from the heart. And this is it. Ooh. Mission work, what we came here to do. I love this energy, guys. I love this. The Hierophant is an indicator of two principal energies, learning from within and learning from each other in order to achieve the highest level of consciousness possible. You must acknowledge that truly you are your own guru and the subtle whisper of your heart contains all the wisdom of the cosmos. Further, we are all in this together. So living as one family is imperative in creating the new paradigm. We can live by old structures of the past or establish new ones moving forward. The important thing is that we are taking our spiritual practices seriously, seriously and evolving as we go in every way. Now, there's so many key pieces of information in this. This is honoring our own individual universes, our own individual spiritual expansions and understanding we're not going to get in the spiritual war. My way is right. Your way is that. Look, we're all coming back to one. We're all restoring this wholeness. We all have a grand part to play in this grand symphony of harmony of our evolution and healing of the planet through the evolution of our species because we're destroying it right now. This is the thing. As we're honoring our own universes and honoring that they're all individually unique and what, what may work for some will not work for others because, of course, what's in someone's heart chakra is not in someone else's heart chakra. What is of someone's wounding is not of someone else's wounding. And maybe on your mission, you came here to heal from uh, this separateness, this piece of separateness to restore the wholeness. Like there's so many places that we've gone separate that we must restore the wholeness that we're all on different points of this mission to come back to one and unite everything. All of our paths are unique to us. Our shine is unique to us. This is not about getting in a war of spirituality that is going back to old earth where we've been. So we're going to honor our own unique past, what we're doing here. We're not going to get in this, you know, you got to do this. You got to do that. So honoring our universes. But then we must also honor we're connected. So yeah, what you're doing over here is connected to what I'm doing over here. And being accepting of that. Having that knowledge so we can be tolerant. We can be tolerant that our universes are all connected. But they're all our own unique universes. And this is where our separateness has there. It's being kept. It's, it's so distorted here because, yeah, we do feel separate because we, our own unique universes have not been honored within the matrix. It's like we have to be, you know, these cookie cutter automatons all look the same, walk the same, dress the same, be the same, act the same. And if we don't, if someone steps out of line, well, there's a problem. But that's not where we're going. That's not life. That's not how things are. Let's twist it. We're all unique. And... It's time for us to honor our uniqueness. Now, this is where we're going to create our happiness. It's not like our mom and our dad or our brother or our partner is going to come in and honor our uniqueness. And then we're going to be happy. No, we're going to honor our uniqueness. And this has a lot to do with healing. 
we have to we have to really find this is has to do with the healthy pride we're healing from the pride of the ego but we're going to restore the pride of our spirituality and this is honoring self like saying no you know what that doesn't work for me this is not of me no this is not of my path no that doesn't resonate for with me no this is depleting my energy I have to cut ties from this. This is not for me. I have to walk away. I have to create over here. You know what? I'm creating over here. I'm creating over here. I'm not creating over here. I'm not creating over here. I'm not creating over here. I've had these experiences so I know how to shift to where I need to go. But I'm not going to keep coming up here and creating up here. I'm going to go to the places I need to go now. I'm going to expand. Create anew. So... Here's now where we're going to connect to the energy of the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is the water aspect within water, which means that she is pure emotion and their mirroring reflections. Within her, there are reflections upon reflections within reflections. Amidst this fun house of mirrors, all senses of individual personality is lost, and instead this queen finds Reflections of her universal consciousness in the eyes of everyone she meets. Bubbles reflecting her observant eyes rise from her watery throne to encircle the Queen of Cups. Upon drawing the Queen of Cups, you are advised to create time to pause and reflect. The basis of this is that due to her infinitely, her infinitely subtle nature. It is hardly possible to see the genuine truth of her being. For she reflects the observer, you. With tremendous detail, she is veiled by endless bubbles and curves of light and invites you to recognize how deep your inner waters go and how many aspects of you are actually just mirrors of others you've met along your way. Now, that is so important. We have, co we have connected to the universe. We've connected to the all. We've connected to what is of everyone else in order to see what is not of us. This is reflecting back to us everything to see. This is going to reflect back to us the positive. This is going to reflect back to us the negative. This is going to reflect back to us the all, all of creation, what's happening, the good, the bad, and the ugly, guys. The good, the bad, and the ugly. But it's order to see what we need to see to have reflected back to us in order to create a new. Because we, you know, this is the connection to this. Even though this is happening through Scorpio, we're connecting to the cups because we need to purify. This is going to help our purification process by what's being reflected back to us. Because look, this is our connection to deception. How else are we going to see what's being deceived if we don't have it reflected back to us? This is connected to the, the manipulation. So our... De this deceptiveness is connected to the manipulation of the matrix of us of what's happening the energies so we are going to restore it into alignment we are reflective we, we can't get lost in this this is we could get lost in our emotions we must stay reflective here and transmute learn learn from what is being reflected back to us and create and look she's got the child she has the child and she's connected to the patterning of life within the cup. She has the right cup now and she's expanded with it. This is the pattern that is on this cup that's been offered from spirit. The patterning of our divine blueprint of us, our expansion pack pathway. And it's coming out of the cup. And this is, you know, this is a, this is a lot of energy coming at us. We need to use this to the best of our capabilities and we don't want to get lost in this. This is connected to the madness and the lunacy of the moon. We want to stay in introspection and stay with the light. Don't get lost. Let's talk to the all now. Let's talk to the all so we can keep going forward and make some more sense of what's happening here. The all depicts an infinite field of spirits manifesting a never-ending spiral creation of holy temples, representing the infinite ways of appreciating and honoring spirits. The planets are aligned along this vortex pillar as well. 
depicting the celestial chakras as we have comprehended them. So, the planets are aligned along this vortex pillar, depicting the celestial chakras as we comprehend them. That's our connection. To Look, we're going to heal with self, but we're also going to heal with the all. And restore this connection between our separateness and the universal flow, the rhythms and dance of creation. I'm dancing over here, guys. I'm dancing. Okay. This card is tethered to that on the tree of life. I'm going to, you know, I'm not the best at pronunciation. Here we go. Working on this, working on my masculine energy. Which represents knowledge, the bridge between idea and what we call reality. It is the only true measure of how we may come to know God. And this is true. Like how you visualize things is so wild, right? And then when you see it in the 3D, it never looks like how we envisioned it to. I found this so frustrating because like, you know, in being a Piscean and really oh, like being a dreamer and a daydreamer at that, always seeing these grand visions and then trying to, you know, replicate what I've seen here in the 3D and it never living up to my expectations and being so frustrated. But now as I have found wisdom within my experiences and honoring my path, understanding that how we perceive things within the 5D and beyond is much different than how we ground them here within the 3D. And we have to have a surrendering process here and we have to understand it doesn't look like how we saw it in our head, but that's because we're shape-shifting it from the 5D to the 3D. This describes in essence anything can happen. There are an infinite amount of subjects to learn. There is an infinite amount of number and pathways to explore. While we may be limited, our souls and the spirit they emerge from are eternal. Thus, representing an opportunity to compassionately embrace a lesson we are learning or let go and let flow, depending on the orientation. We need to let go and let flow. We need to let go of our sorrows. We need to create flow with our happiness. We are healing from stagnation. This is key in the shift. We connect to the all and we are moving forth to the Ten of Cups. I have moved the Ten of Cups to where it is within the placement of the sequence now. But I just wanted to put it there so that we can understand that this is where the connection is. It's connected to this space. The Eight of Cups is connected to the Ten of Cups. The reunication, going home. The all releasing to embrace is connected to our deprivation and prosperity but this is end game here this is our goal this is how we're going to get there the aeon we're not going to regress we're not going to stay stuck within the five of cups our sorrows three of swords connection we are going to advance and we remember that this five of cups ace of swords connection is going to help us go home the Five of Cups, oh, see, I'm already reading the future. The Three of Swords is connected to the Ace of Swords. We're going to find clarity within the pain. That's why we need to go within these cups that are connected to our heartache because we're going to find clarity. We remember that our pain and our sorrows is why we're in conflict of the mind. There is the anarchy. And that conflict of the mind is connected to the active charge of battling, projecting our wounds outward and aggression in order to heal. We have a wound that's being coming to, you know, it's there. It's making its presence known. We're going to heal from that charge because... It's all about the Six of Cups purification, the Two of Cups connection, and our Ten of Cups, our purpose, new earth, the expansion, the building of new earth. And right now we're in the destruction of the old. Old earth is in decay as we build up the new. Let's get our message of the Aeon. Upon realizing that he is pure light, we are now faced with the final gateway of our journey. 
the passage through the gates of time and the, advan the advancement into the next part of our journey. Remembering all of the mistakes of our past, forgiving ourselves and affirming the lessons we have gained along the way. Our personal changes have affected the world and together they move through a state of transition. This is the forgiveness and the integration of all past action and the opening of a grand new cycle as a result. The aeon signals a time of great closure and finality, the ending of a chapter in your life and the advancement to a new level for you. This is a time to come to terms with the mistakes you've made throughout your life and to forgive them in order to accept the lessons you've learned as a result. These experiences live on inside of you as memories, but no longer need to have any hold over you as you enter into the new era of your life. And that's it. We've expanded. This is the Merkaba. Look, we're letting go of what's lower vibrational, what's not of self. It's all being, look, going where it needs to go. We are expanding. Look at that connection. I want you to see. This is connected to the twin flame energy and that Da Vinci man, the two coming together to unite as one. We are whole. The phoenix rising from the ashes. We have expanded from old self and created new. And look at this. We're connecting to the energies of the heaven. We are raising our vibration. We are completely connected from the heavens and the patterning of the heavens to the earth. Our connection to the Merkaba and healing expansion through self. We matter. This matters. You matter. Now we have entered the way. We've created flow. We're trusting. We're praying. Our life has become an active prayer. The way can only be truly understood when experienced in relationship to the teachings of the tale which translates to the way. The tale that can be expressed in words is not the eternal tale. The tale teaches that no matter how we attempt to indicate a concept, what we are indicating cannot possibly encompass the true spirit of the said concept. On the tree of life, this card connects with Ain, the internal vacuum of spirit. Ain is the nothingness from which the concept of infinity emerges, describing that all that originates from and dissolves back into nothingness. This may seem like a blessing and a curse, but it simply is the way we came to be and the way we're going. The essence. This is the essence. The appearance of the way in a reading has one meaning that can be interpreted in various ways. The highest principle is that we are in complete trust and faith, which is beyond our ability to comprehend. In this, we have surrendered to the flow that moves through us. We've, we've surrendered to spirit. Energy flow through us. The upright key on the card suggests the act of the player is the purest method to tap into the natural flow and an open channel with the divine. Through the act of a player, the act of prayer. The way has a meaning that can be interpreted in a various of ways. The highest principle is that we're in complete trust and faith in that which is beyond our capability to comprehend. We've surrendered to the flow that moves through us, the energy of creation. Now, this is the act of prayer, is the purest method to tap into the natural flow and an open channel with the divine. Through prayer, a space of silence is created. So the subtlest of notions from spirit may come through. And first, we have to have a complete and total trust. A deep level of trust that indicates a true experience of knowing that no matter what, we are one with spirit and we're going to get to where we need to go. Because we're going home. Here, we've gone within. It's dark. We're following the path of the moon. We're following the light within the dark. Now, we have restored connection. We've, we've risen. We've evolved. It's connected to the sun and our illumination. Now, we've healed from narcissism. And we are expanding with our light. And we've connected to the zodiac.
we are experiencing complete inner illumination. As our consciousness transforms into pure light, we have gone through our darkness, guided by the power of the moon, and experienced the depths within. As a result, we have uncovered our true self. The Kundalini has awakened, and we rise in love as the cosmos around honor us and sing our palms. The sun represents success and abundance flowing through you and in all ways at this time. This is a bright and vibrant energy which can help you un overcome. I was going to say uncover, but that is also true. Overcome and uncover anything you're going through, allowing you to stand with confidence for what you believe. The light of the sun illuminates the pathway forward. All is bathed in the warm glow. Problems are resolved and all things become, become easy and simple. And that is what we're at, right? The moon and the sun restoring balance through us. This is also symbolism for how things work here. And we're always learning from how things work here. Now, in the dark, in the dark is where you see the most light. But you shine the light and there's an a overabundance of light what do you see shadow the shadow energies there's the shadows right there and that's how we use both of these energies to the best of our capabilities as we're moving forward we're going to start really learning understanding how to use how things work how to use energy to the best of our capabilities it's like the game of chess we remember we're always playing and how do we make the best amount of of moves with our energy, do we have to preserve some energy here? What output? Like, we, we really are starting to understand energy. Healing from the devil energies we have. The devil, right? Separateness. We're going to heal through self. We're going to create sad. We're going to create happiness from sadness through self by creating flow. The water energies. This is connected to compassion. We must restore compassion through self. We must, can, we must restore compassion through self. This is how we honor this energy. And we restore p compassion through self. We restore compassion for everybody, for the all. Water and emotion is in its unmanifested form. You might see it, at, you might see it as an emotional seed. The place where emotion is birthed and experienced. This is the realm of pure feeling, sensitivity, and the pure divine feminine. The pure divine feminine, right here. The womb in which feelings are birthed. The Ace of Cups invites you to look deep within to the place of subtle emotional resonance and get in touch with your feelings. Resting your awareness here, you find the heart of your desires. The ability to empathize with others and true love. This is the place where feelings give birth to thoughts, will, and action. This is the place from which you share your heart with the world. Now, why is this so important? Well, first of all, we know energy is motion. But this is where our thoughts are birthed from our emotions. We need to heal with our thoughts, our mind. Because our thoughts are how we manifest. This is the key right here. This is it. And whatever messages we will be building off of in this reading, we are going to be building off of here. I'm being called to get an activation for this card specifically. And we will after we finish the rest of this message here. Now, here, we've been in withdrawal. We, we're going to connect to the cup of us. Here we connect to our spirituality. We expand chakras lit. We are expanding here. Now we're connected. Marriage. We're coming together. We're uniting. The lovers. The lovers depicts all the previous characters in a single image. The hierophant, the emperor, the empress, the priestess, and the wizard. They stand across from each other, joining hands and connecting, depicting the alchemical, alchemical process of marriage between all opposing forces. 
mature and youthful male and female energies which has developed over the past five cards before this those cards we just discussed the journey the path of a fool this is the union of opposites showing unity and duality in a single image that's the gift of this card the lovers speaks towards a sense of devotion to each other in relationships a choice you must make or a balance within the dualities within yourself it is loving and kind honoring what is different within the opposites without judgment and expressing gratitude for the various perspectives that we share so that we may all come closer to each other and ourselves finally this represents a call to look at any particular relationship in your life and find harmony where there is not. We're, we came here to create harmony. Um, you know, this is why we're always talking about healing, harmonizing, and raising the vibration. We're healing to harmonize and raise the vibration with our relationships, connection. Because New Earth is built with communities like the bee that support the sweet nectars of life and what we came here to create together. Now, here we've been dealing with our loss, our sorrows. We have been reflected back to us the positive and the negative charges of life here. Connection and disconnection. What we need to do to restore love. Unconditional love. So now what we do is we're going to add the King of Cups energy and this is going to help us because we're not going to be miserable anymore. Here we're caught in misery. We're going to become responsive. And the King and the Queen of Cups are going to work together to restore wholeness. And that is going to be connected to where we're going here with the Two of Cups. But before we do... Let's see the message of the King of Cups. The King of Cups sits atop his watery horse, exploding out of the ocean. In one arm, he holds the trident of Poseidon, showing his powerful command and leadership. In his other hand, a cup from which a crab emerges, drawing attention to the zodiac cancer and the intensity of water it embodies. He is the strength and energy of water, the rain and ocean itself. That's some powerful stuff right there. That's the power of water. The King of Cups is here with an invitation to observe the ways in which you respond and react to the world around you. The Cups element is emotional and thus focused internally. However, the King brings fiery willpower into the mix. What emotions cause you inner fire? What emotions cause your inner fire to spark? And there it is. That's why we need this energy. Because we're healing from the five of wands charge. So we need to understand what emotions are causing the spark. Because we need to heal from those emotions because they're connected to the core wound. The king has trouble reflecting upon himself because his actions, like the ocean, are and rain... Let me say that again. The king has trouble reflecting upon himself because his actions, like the ocean and rain, are most often observed on the surface levels and what lies beyond their depths is not seen without willful introspection. Willful inspection. That's why we need the, the king and the queen of cups to work together so that we can use these energies to expand with we have to get them to work together we have to create equality we're going from fear to love we have to use what's being reflected back to us in order to respond to it and move forward we're connecting to the two baby we're connecting to the two and this is where the magic is happening the purest manifestation of the water. The Two of Cups embodies unified connectedness by allowing the complete embrace of two distinct energies, whether they ex are external or internal. Harmony, compassion, friendship, and love are the orders of the day. 
repre representing an outpouring of love in the most profound sense. What is within you mirrors what is without you. Relax and allow everything to flow and be. For there is no, nothing more beautiful than our outward appearance that reflects the inner nature of the soul. Your heart knows exactly what to do or to say in each moment. So be present to hear its advice. If you give yourself to love, you will realize there is nothing more to fear. Now that is really big and key. We don't want to be reflecting our past into the situation or reflecting our future into the situation. We need to see what we need to see within the moment. That is very important. That is a key piece of information to move forward with. And we need to be more mindful of creating within the moment. That's where the wonder is. And we can slow down time there. If we create within the moment, we can slow down time. It's not where we were going to get frantic and want to connect back to the devil energies. We want to feel this peace that we're creating on the path of the moon. And that peace, that two of swords, is connected to the two of cups. Now, this is our illusions. Our illusions, the seven of cups right here, we're seeing through our illusions. So we're connecting to the all. So what we want to do is see where we're equal. We actually want to see where we're equal or where we're not equal so we can create it. And now we're going to begin creating this and feeling this because we're going from lust to joy. And we're going from lust to joy because we've had a reunication. We've reconnected to spirit. We understand what joy is. And we understand that lust is connected to the devil energies. This is feeling joy. We're going from feeling happiness to feeling joy. Now we're really, when we add this feeling, we're elevating into new earth. We're elevating there. So let's receive the message of the Six of Cups. Two beings are intertwined in a childlike innocence. Their embrace is sensual and opening. Harmony of energies without effort or strain comes naturally upon cultivation. Receptivity to love and giving love freely. Pleasure is accompanied by a sense of reunion and a nostalgia. There is an opening of the emotional heart center. Good feelings are abundant and everyone is happy. Now this is why we're in a time right now of having our heart chakra ripped open so that poison can ooze on out. That's why. So we can get here. You have found a place within to nurture the love that has always been residing there. And through offering this love freely, it has been reflected back to you in plenty. In a loving embrace, you share your sacred space with those you care for. This loving embrace is intimate and gentle, uplifting and delightful. And because we can feel vulnerable here, we're feeling vulnerable. And look, this is the most beautiful part. We've healed with our chakras. We have restored flow. And we're creating with the energies of nature, with the heavens to the earth through us and through our connection now. This is so beautiful. This is so sacred. And now we're going to be uplifted by this joy into our new earth, into the Ten of Cups, into going home. Because we have now created prosperity from deception. A family runs with joy across the surface of the water to a grand ocean city, floating in the distance. Their tremendous love for each other has brought about a new era for humanity, and mankind thrives because of it. They have reached a level of completion to their great cycle, having achieved all that they set out to do. A new cycle of life is about to begin. Love has fused all of the elements of spirit and matter resulting in the perfect moment where dream and reality are one. The sun shines with a deep red energy that cascades out all around it. And in the distance, a dragon can be seen approaching from far away, implying that a new adventure of some kind is on its way. The Ten of Cups holds a space for you thriving in life, internally and externally. 
The end of this cycle indicates the beginning of a new one. This speaks to kindness, harmony, connection, alignment, and everlasting love for each other and all of life. There is a strong energy of a new home become manifest and the satisfaction which, which comes from completing a long and perhaps even difficult journey. Well done. Open your arms wide and express your love freely, embracing this feeling of thriving. For soon you will begin a new journey and life will continue on. And we've done it. We're going home. Because we've created harmony. We've created this grand symphony. And we need all of us. It's like this is where we heal from envy. It's not like, oh, only this star is shining. No, we need all of our vibrations. We need all of us to shine. Because it's all of our vibrations that are creating this grand symphony of the healing that we are doing. This is the grand symphony of our healing songs. Our evolution songs to move this planet forward. And it's all connected. It's this grand symphony we're creating. It's like, here's your vibration, gonna connect to this vibration, gonna connect to this vibration of all of us to heal us and uplift us into harmony. And this is why, you know, you've seen, it's like, if you've ever seen that, you know, music today is now is distorted and we know about our ancient healing frequencies. Those frequencies are of harmony and we're, the matrix is, matrix is trying to create disharmony here and distort things so we stay in conflict, so we stay confused, so we stay in sorrow, so we stay stuck. But we're seeing through those illusions and we're creating harmonies through the energies of the opposite, through the disharmony. So we felt all this disharmony so we could see how to add the positive charge. And we add this positive charge and we create the harmony in all these spaces within our life and we connect to the grand symphony of this evolutionary expansion. And it's connected to the Fibonacci sequence and spiral of us expanding together and expanding out of our karmic loops with the universe, with universal patterning, with universal principles, connected to our spiritual patterns, our spiritual principles. We're uniting. We're coming together as one and we're going home. We're building the golden ages, builders of the light. Builders of the Golden Ages. Our mission work is amping up. Now, let's get our message and see what's being activated here. 